Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Ridiculously Early J Morning Show. Things are a little strange today uh, because I am actually working a day ahead now. We're recording this on Monday. It's going to post on Tuesday. And also, this is episode 12. Uh, episode 11 is something I filmed over the weekend, and it's taking forever to edit. So I'm adding this delay so that I can implement editing. Uh, and uh, I have this massive wall of... Oh, you can't even see it. Uh, I have two hours of footage left to go through and, and make sense of. That's already cutting down from four hours, so I kind of learned my lesson about filming too much in one go and trying to make sense of it. But it's going to take a while for that. So uh, next episode to be posted will be episode 12, which is today, uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube. And episode 11 will come sometime in the future. Uh, it's kind of the most important episode so far uh, because it has the feature that uh, this whole project is about. So we can now actually demonstrate the system as it's meant to work. The idea is that you can now um, go into um, our presentation tool and uh, you can now watch a macro play out in real time. Uh, you can replay the macro from the start. You can replay the macro from the middle. Here we have the second part of that macro being typed out and then you can see it actually being executed. There's still quite a bit of bug fixing and, and whatnot to do, but this is enough to actually to make a video presentation. And so I'm, I'm hyped, super excited about that. I actually have a script ready to go. I'm waiting to put it out the door. I have this massive thing that I'm trying to uh, record. Right, so what am I working on? We're just gonna go through bug triage. And I'm just going to do a little bit of backlog grooming here. I'd say this is done. I asked on the list. I didn't get a better response. It's what we have for now. So this is actually in the J front end, and not for me to do. So this is really more, eh, you know what, I'll keep that there and uh, keep both of those things there. And I'll just get this out of there. This just shouldn't be in the backlog. So um, I'm going to put this all the way at the bottom, and then shift left, and then when I widen, and then narrow the subtree, it will not be there. And we're going to go ahead and put a category in here called done, finished, completed. You know, this is not the most exciting part of software development, but it is essential to go through and clean out your backlog. Okay, so I think most of this is working. See, I was trying to group all this stuff by type, and it's, not, it's confusing because you jump all over the place when you're in software. Um, and so I think what I'm going to do is for each one of these, so if they're done, I'm just going to move them out to the end. You know, move all these ones that are up, they're not done. And let's see what we have here. Use in-world variables. Yes, we have all this stuff done. I'll move all this up at the end. What's in here? Initial thoughts. Probably did that wrong, right? Not, I'm not even reading these things, right? So I'm just looking at colors and saying if it's done, I'm going to move it to the end here. So if, if you don't know what I'm, I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing either. Why isn't that working? Shift L, shift Edit command lines in the narrative. Okay, so that's something I want to do. Save editor slide at each step. Right, so these are all part of uh, left side editor. This is debug. Bug. Maybe. No, this is really like the enhanced REPL. So this is the idea that you would be able to see all your global variables at one point uh, as you use the REPL. This is the enhanced REPL. Should I just call this JREPL? Okay, pre render the REPL interactions for all slides. That's actually done. I did that yesterday. And there's another duplicate ticket there. Uh, history can be just a list of lines on the screen. And each step store, which one is the bottom most on the screen? Yeah, so this is a pretty good uh, definition of how it works. I'll just leave that here, mark it as done. So it is a duplicate. It's actually nicer than the, the one we have there. So you gotta store which one is the bottom most on the screen. Then to render, take the window of lines the same size as the terminal. If less than terminal size early on, we can display that at the top. For each input, there should be, could also be an animation of how we arrived at it. All of this works. Except possibly this one. Yeah, we're not at the top. The cursor's not at the top. So that's a to-do. Oops. Start REPL cursor at the top of the screen. Uh, and that actually works in the REPL, so it's only in uh, JPRES that we have a problem with that. So I'm going to actually move that up to uh, the top of the backlog because I really do want to make a movie of it. I have my script all ready to go. Uh, and it would be nice if the REPL started at the top. All right, so save state of the editor slide at each step. That's the left side editor. Time travel debugger for presentations. Yes, that's what JPRES is. Token editor. All right, so that's a lot of old ideas here. All right, let's move all of this up here to complete. Don't hard code the script path. I really want this to be flat. I've realized the error of my ways here. These can be grouped into epics or whatever. I'll use tags now. You know, this is org mode for Emacs. All right, so start REPL cursor at the top of the screen. Yes. Move that to the top of the backlog. Uh, it's actually done in the standalone version of the REPL, so 
should be easy fix to make it part of JPRES. Larger changes after I ship a video. All right, so I'll move that to the bottom. Although some of those might be important. Small bug fixes enhancements. This is really a level of effort kind of thing um, and I need to just get rid of that notion. Token editor. I just want to get all these in the same backlog. For those of you who are not professional software developers, the concept of a backlog is just all the, the bugs and feature requests and whatnot that you have to do on your plate. But of course they have different priorities, so you know, there are different schools of thought as to when you should schedule these things. Some people put them all on a Gantt chart and you know, plan things out to the very last detail. Why not indent all at once? Because I do not know how to do that. <laughs> I know how to make macros. I don't know how to, I don't know how to select. Can you do it? Shift L? No. Nope. There probably are tools for this, but I, if you happen to know the key binding, org indent region. Indent region, okay. This is Emacs. This is org mode for Emacs. Org indent region. Did not like that uh, because this is probably not the indent operation. So if I press R, okay, so if I say, describe key and I press R. Well, yes, obviously it's self insert command, but not when I'm in, not when I'm on the left hand side of the screen here. This is kind of a cool, it, it's like an outlining tile, but it's also kind of like a, a database. Shift V, O oh, with evil. Yeah, I, I don't, the, the Vim key binding, so I haven't really used evil or Vim, and I'm certainly not gonna turn it on on, on cam here. I, I know there's a evil and there's a vile, and both of them give you uh, Vim key bindings for Emacs. Org mode is awesome. I love org mode. Hard to change after I ship a video. And I think, I think if you do the, what's the right way to set level of effort? I think it's just a property that you can set. Effort estimates. Can I do that? Can I go to column mode? Org column mode priority. Yeah, so I've never used any of this like clock time and all this stuff, but I kind of want to. Clocking working time. So let's see if we can do this. So, <laughs> I discovered yesterday, or, or over the weekend, I, I filmed four hours of, of content, of, of me programming, and then I tried to edit it, and it was an absolute mess. If I had a way to like, see what I was working on at every minute, then maybe I, I could use that to record kind of like a, a timestamps for the, the video and be able to help, help me organize what I was working on. But, you know, you, you start working on one task, and you find a bug, and then you get sidetracked onto something else, and so there, there's a whole stack of what's going on. So clock table. But what I want to know is, can I see like a report, like what I did, resolving idle time? What does that mean? You need to resolve the time, okay. So can I see org mode clock log? Clocking commands, the clock table. Org clock report. All right, so, all right, we'll get to that in a minute. But maybe I'll put like a process thing here. So start clocking time with org mode to do, learn how to use org clock report. Or, or just even org clock. My experience so far with org clock is that I sometimes accidentally press the key and it starts the clock and then I have to go look up how to stop the clock and get rid of the information because I didn't ever want it before. So this will be new. All right, so I'm, I'm actually zoomed in right now. So if I widen, CXN widen, right? What? CXN widen. Isn't that what I did? Well, maybe that's the top of the file, okay. Yeah, so we got this whole bunch of stuff up in here. I should probably move this to the JPRES repository, right? So there's some of these things are JKVM related, narrative programming system. I don't know if JPRES is a narrative programming system. It's part of it, definitely. I, I can leave that for later. That's, this is all later stuff. This is all stuff I wanna make in terms of videos. Parse escape codes. This is definitely JKVM, and that's actually kind of done, except uh, it's really slow. A lot of this is uh, document CWIO, but I haven't actually Document and port CWIOs. So CW is for color write, and it was a little markup language for uh, writing stuff to the terminal. I wrote it years and years ago, probably in the 90s when I was in high school. In Turbo Pascal, and it's, it's a mess, but I, I'd like to clean it up and bring it into the modern day. Um, to find a simple and easy way to implement graph system, this is all here later. This has nothing to do with uh, yeah, REPL widget, that's definitely up here. Uh, outliner widget, yes. Stack widget, yes. I haven't talked about the stack widget ever, but that's definitely coming. And yes, this, this can come later. Side-by-side -side outliners, do I want that? Eh, probably at some point. Inbox sorting thing, these are all like things I have coming in the future. Missing KVM features, definitely goes with KVM, right? So, KVM. Find an efficient graph representation, Foursquare theorem, poly 
polygonal numbers. Uh, that must be a proof that was interesting to me and then I want, at some point I'm gonna be making a proof system and I wanted to, oh, I actually do want a file browser. So another thing I've noticed about myself watching these videos is that I tend to, to just murder my sentences by not finishing them. So if I'm to explain something, I'm going to look away from this file because I can't be editing and talking at the same time. So what I was saying is the four square theorem, this is something I found on Wikipedia or somewhere, probably on Twitter, so I follow a lot of math channels. And it looked interesting, and I don't know what it is right now, uh, but I want to do these little proofs. I, I want to be able, to, I, I want my videos to be about, like, mostly I make math videos, right? Math and programming videos. With I kind of use J to explain things. Every natural number can be re represented as a sum of four integer squares. That is, the squares form an additive basis of order four. Okay. Well, I don't know what was useful about this proof. I'm sure it's interesting. But these are all talks I want to do at some point, or ideas for talks. Ranked adjectives, yeah, that's something I'd like to have in J. So these are J talks blocked waiting on pres tool. Okay, yeah. Terminal mode view mat is done. So I'm gonna get rid of this. I believe this is all done. So I'll move that up here. Our commands, what's missing? Do I need these yet? This is actually for, I had a whole series of videos planned to make uh, using a virtual machine. I, I want to get a subset of J running on a virtual machine and be able to port that to different environments. Uh, the browser, but also places like uh, Godot, which is like this graphics uh, and, and game programming engine. And there's this really cool environment in Smalltalk that I want to talk about. And it would be nice if every time I change these environments, I had a, a little scripting language that ran atop the environment. Like I'd love to have you know, access to my tool, you know, when I fire up Firefox or Emacs or something like that and be able to run the code inside any of these environments. So B4 is meant to be a portable virtual machine. So that's all coming later. To find an efficient graph representation, consider op changes. These are all for B4. So this is B4. This is B4. Uh, make my own reference page, VT escape codes. Sure, but that has nothing to do with programming right now. So this is all just, uh, no, so this is all B4. Actually, this is B3, which is a bootstrapping system for B4. And I think this is all possibly this side-by-side -side outliners but that's just two outlines. File commands, load file, save file. We definitely need those. Text editor component. I definitely need all this stuff. Implement the system, string hash and B4. So that is not a useful grouping. I'm planning bridging the guy. Yep, the guy. Yes. This is all stuff I want to do. It's also like uh, unprocessed B4 stuff. Shift right, shift R, shift R as part of the stackwise thing. I know this is really boring, sorry, if you came here for J. So the model of array languages, what's missing? Do I need these yet? I'm probably just gonna delete that at some point. Consider op changes, that's all for B4. Efficient graph representation, maybe that would be the right, yeah, okay. So maybe instead of JPRES, I'll, just, I'll call this uh, Ridiculous Early J Morning Show, and the REPL widget, Outliner widget, Stack widgets coming in the future, JKVM stuff, and J wish list is just stuff to follow up on, and then we've got terminal view mat, file commands, text, and this. So let's just take all of this and move it to what? Text is read only. Why would it be read only? <sighs> Come on. I've been editing it this whole time. How is it suddenly read only? All right, whatever. Everything is broken now. So I've gotten Oregon to some kind of weird state. I'm going to kill it. Yes. Clock out in buffer at time before killing it. Yes. Save change buffer. Yes. So fine. This is the script for the thing I want to make. Uh, org mode. R. Come on now. I can put that in JTOC. So if somebody actually really wants to see this file, they can go and look at it under the JTOX directory. So first, uh, let's just make a new directory, cd slash o, ed plan, git commit, move stuff to uh, JTOX. A peek at the code is enough to understand what you're saying. Yesterday, or Saturday, I tried explaining one line of J, and it, I, like, I have this theory that every bug in the, in the universe is a, bugs are caused by a mismatch between what you think you wrote and what you wrote. And so I tried to explain this thing and I had a bug in that sense. Like everything was working fine, but when I tried to explain it, like nothing was, nothing in my explanation was going right. And so I had, 
half an hour where I was trying to do a code review and I couldn't get into my head what the code actually said. So I find that I don't actually read my code. I think that even when I've written the code, I think I, having an idea in your head of what the code does makes the code easier to read. Uh, and it does that because you're not actually reading it. You're leaning on your mental understanding as a crutch. And so if you know what a, a line of J code does, it's much easier to decipher it because you have that in your head. But on the flip side of that, uh, it's much easier to overlook a mistake because your brain is compensating for that. So I don't know, it kind of goes both ways. I don't know if glancing at, at J code is ever enough to understand it, unless it's very, very short. Or you're way smarter than me, which is entirely possible. In fact, entirely likely. Okay, Ed plan is, yeah, okay, whatever. Oh, did I not save that? gdedplan.org. Oh, so whatever I did last time was, okay, it doesn't matter. This is a private thing. Get fetch, get stash, get rebase, merge conflict in edplan.org. Okay, okay, I don't need to do, we do that right now. Get stash pop. Dang it. Why do I have a merge conflict? Revert buffer, yes, okay, fine. All right, we don't need this. I don't know why that happened. And there should be a, I have two copies of this now. Yeah, okay, so two copies of this, whatever. Get rebase, continue. All right, get push. I don't know why I would ever have a conflict in that file because I don't edit it anywhere else, but I guess I did. All right, so um, sorry about that. <laughs> probably the most boring, you know, it's funny, triage is probably my favorite meeting of the week at my company. I work on the, the UI team, and so we get, all manner of requests from all in the company, all the bug reports come to us and usually wind up on my plate and then we get to figure out what's going on in the whole system and send it to the right people and just have this whole little triage process. <laughs> the ridiculously boring Jay morning show, yep. The, the Flutter um, team, Google is making this thing called Flutter that makes, uh, that it's like a cross-platform UI tie and it's written in dark. They have the boring, I think it's just called the boring show. Uh, and, and all they do is they, they sit down and live code, they, they show all the mistakes and and they, they two people pair programming and it's, I don't know, it's, it's probably one of the best and most professionally well done and edited uh, live coding shows I've seen, if you like that kind of stuff. I, I suppose it's probably not live coded since it's Google. You know, they probably have some, you know, they probably have some amount of scripting and rehearsal and editing and all that stuff, but uh, they, they sit down, they just write codes. It's, it's meant to give you the details and uh, it's actually, they, they call it boring. It's, it's nice to watch. I like, I watch it at twice speed. Back to backlog uh, grooming. All right, so we don't need this top level title anymore because this whole file is now about this. Backlog is here. And right, so now it's kind of like a Kanban board, Kanban, sorry. So we say done, uh, selected, backlog. We could do in progress, but in progress, you know, you can on the camera select. I would just call it sprint. Current, finished, and future. All right, start clocking time with org mode. So that's more of a, what'd you call this? Learn. So it's really learn to clock time with org mode. Run the command and show the output in the REPL. All right, so this is a JPRES thing. Um, that's actually pretty important. So as of yesterday, you can say, say shift E to add something to this REPL. And you can say, hello, oh, let's actually write some J. Backspace key doesn't work. Uh, how about the average of the first 10 prime? Sum divided by length of the first 10 primes, P I 10, there you go. So now you type that and you can see the, the macro and the, uh, the actual line, and then you can actually play back the macro. And that is a bug. Why is that, what is happening there? The bug is that inserting a new line does not uh, clear out the state or it seems to copy the state the wrong way. Right, so inserting the line does not insert state. So that's a bug. So will call this inserting REPL into script mismanages start state. So this is a bug and this is jprez. I don't think I really need priorities. I don't want to use the priority field. How do you set priority? Or priority. Let's just shift up and down. I'll just use A for bugs so that I know that they're important. Run the command and show output in the REPL. Okay. Yeah. Turn the clock time with org mode. Start. I'm just going to go ahead and like look this up. So this would be now. Start REPL cursor at top of the screen. This is important and easy. Oh, I, I can use uh, to-do types for the type of thing. To-do items, to-do basics, to-do types, workflow states. Yeah, but you can do this at the top of the file somehow. Per file keywords. All right, so, and it's gonna be um, bug, 
new or bug add we use it the way it's meant to use and just add to do i'll still tag it with bug just in case let's do okay so close the file open the file oops max current bug add to do i'll call this task no this is just a to do this is a add a new feature this is bug return the command and show the output in the REPL. I'm just going to say bug to do. Run the command and show the output in the REPL. That's a to do. Learn the clock time with org mode. That's a to do. I'll call these. Test that the macro actually produces the next line of code in the script. That's important, um, but not nearly as important as this because um, I can get that same effect by reloading the file because that reloading the file reloads everything so I can just see on the screen what the uh, effects are. And so I don't need to. No, that's not true. This is, this is saying this is the test for not for the output of the command, but for the, that the macros themselves actually produce the text. This is an easy fix, but it's not all that important, kind of like a, a level C kind of thing. So I'll set this to level C. Clear future worlds on input. It's the same kind of thing. It, this is in JPRES. It's just it's to, to clean up the state. Backspace key in editor is driving me nuts. That's priority A. Tie into the command history. Just a minute ago, I had to when I was typing this, so if I go back to MJE, here now I want to uh, insert a new line, uh, and the focus is here now. Uh, it's not obvious. And I want to add something to that line. I can't do anything to recall that line. So that needs to be fixed. I have to re retype it by hand right now, when really, uh, if I had access to the history, which I you know it's there, I, I ought to be able to like press up or something and get that previous line, uh, navigate to the, the previous history. That's really a feature of the REPL. So that's JREPL. Right, so those are, we'll leave those in the backlog. We'll just call this backlog. Hook input up to worlds.ijs. Yeah, that's the same thing. So tie REPL to the command history. Pressing up or down should let you navigate the input history. I was going to say you shouldn't be able to go into the future, but why not? The input history is stored for the entire file. So if you've already typed the whole file and you're just editing and you go up to the top, maybe you should be able to get access to the, the REPL inputs on the bottom. It would make the replay a little weird, but yeah, I think that's the reason why you shouldn't. Or just then the, the macro test would detect that, that you're trying to look into the future and then it wouldn't actually produce the macro you want. So that would flag. So example, manually edited macros might break or using future completion is invalid. And that's something where you have to manually edit the macro to, to change it. Maybe I'm anticipating a problem here. So maybe, and this is way low priority, but see, detect and bake usage of future command line history. This is for when you have a full future history from loading a presentation and you use that history to complete a line in the past. This makes no sense from a narrative point of view. It's like one of those comics where the guy in the first panel reaches down to the panel below him, and pulls something out of it. Hook input up to worlds.ijs. But it's the same thing as tied to the command line history. This history is provided by worlds.ijs. All right, make worlds optional. Yes, this is right. This is kind of B priority. So the idea is that wor worlds provide the um, time traveling features and some people might just prefer a regular REPL. Not might prefer, even I will prefer it sometimes. Uh, wrap long output line. Um, this is J REPL, but it's also kind of JKVM because the terminal itself has to support it. And if the terminal supports it, then, then J REPL has to support it. So really it's two separate issues. Um, and in fact, there's actually the escape code to toggle wrapping. Will we see any REST code sometime? So, so my plan is to um, ship this product. And then when I'm done with this product, that will be the end of the Ridiculously Early J Morning Show. Uh, it will be just about this one tool. Uh, and then when I'm done, I am I still have time in the morning to, to code. And that hasn't changed. But uh, I just this whole idea of trying to like, film every day of coding is a mistake. And, and, and publish every day of coding. No, I'm, but I'm still going to do Twitch every day. I, I've decided this. So that, uh, as long as I have time in the morning to, to code, I have no reason why I shouldn't turn on the, the screen and, and, and broadcast. But it's not going to be called the Ridiculously Early J Morning Show. It's just going to be something else. And I'm going to break my YouTube channel into two pieces. I'm going to call one Tangent Code. And uh, that will be for this stuff. So this will be 
something related to the word tangent code as the name of the show in the morning and uh, on weekend when I have time to code. Uh, and so the answer is yes. Now that it's not a J specific show, it will be uh, whatever I happen to be working on. So uh, I actually do have a Flutter project to work on. I have our chess training system in Go that I haven't touched in, in quite a while. I have my, my Rust system for uh, Boolean expressions. I plan to make something in VQN. Um, I was thinking about uh, making a, a voxel editor. It's silly. I had this idea, oh, I'll make a, like a, a Minecraft uh, background. I made a sprite editor in J, so I, th I thought I'd make like the 3D version of that, a voxel editor in, in VQN. Or yeah, maybe in uh, in one of the open source of K K fives or K sixes or whatever it is. But but BQN is interesting to me, so I thought I'd try it in BQN at least. And if I like, I'll, I'll keep up with that. But anyway, I, I wanted to make like a, a background editor, a three D modeling tool, but just like voxels. And I have a couple of voxel programs. There's one called Magica, and there's one I forget what it's called. But I've got like three of these, and I don't like any of them. Yeah, voxels and BQN. I think an array language ought to be great for making a, a voxel based. Uh, I thought VQN might be a good way to do that. I might, it might have to, yeah, external tooling. You might need to hook up to some kind of like, uh, yeah, an FFI. I know, you know, you can pretty much download a, a voxel rendering engine for, for for JavaScript or something like that. You know, I could also, I, you know, I, I could also port the BQN interpreter to, or the bytecode interpreter to, to run on Godot or, or something like that. Yeah, and then once you have it on Godot, then in theory you, you have it in Wasm and you can run it in the browser and you can run it, you know, standalone or whatever. But we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I'd love to be an array language in, in Godot. And and Marshall's already done the work of, of making a supposedly easy to port interpreter. So maybe I'll do that. I've also worked on a little bit of, of exposing my uh, Rust stuff to, well, I started with Python and Wasm. And uh, I think there's a Godot wrapper. And I, I tried to do all three. I was going to do just some kind of visualization. Uh, and so it, it turns out that writing these wrappers, Rust code is actually really nice. And, and, an alternative to porting it to GD script would be to port the bytecode interpreter for BQN to, to Rust and then expose that to all these platforms. And then you would have, you know, a, a, a Wasm version, you would have you know, a, a Python version of, of BQN. And uh, sa sadly, you have to write the wrappers three times. And so another project I thought of at some point would be to write a, a, a Rust binding generator. Like maybe there, there's a thing called bind gen for C and maybe you could do some kind of Rust bind gen or something like that. I don't know. That, that seems like a, a huge project to me. Maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe just taking a small thing, porting it to three different platforms or something would teach me how it's done. Somebody's actually working on BQN and Rust and they're porting it to Elixir and it, and the, or, or Erlang. And that also has the same kind of binding generator for Rust. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if, if, a, if a Rust binding generator unifier already exists out there somewhere. But if it doesn't, it's, we're, we're in, in dire need of such a thing. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling now. But those are all things that I might work on in the future. I don't know. My real goal is I, I want to make scripted videos. So this is my tool for making scripted videos. I, once I have this tool working uh, and it's in maintenance mode, then I will program whatever I want, whatever language I want. And some of those will be in J and some of them will be presentations. And I will probably split my YouTube channel into two two different things, one that's really code related and one that uh, more about the ideas and, and math and, and just uses languages like J, like a notation to put things on the screen and not really try and explain the J code, just use it to explain the math and the graphics and, and that kind of stuff. So what it is 9.08. I'm probably going to work on this for another like 20 minutes or so. And this will just be the, the bug triage episode, backlog grooming, whatever. All right. All right, so as a side effect of the world system, the error messages actually contain the word world in them. That's a fairly important fix because you don't want, sometimes you want to illustrate that a bug happens, but you don't want to expose the fact that you're using this magic time traveling thing. I call this a B. Show world for line with content. This is like a debug thing. This is super low priority. I will call it a C. Repl animations can also push input to the editor buffer. That's fairly important. Store the editor state, visible buffer, so left side editor, visible buffer cursor in each world. Yes, so that is, um, that's going to be very easy to do. Um, I basically did the same thing for the REPL yesterday. Insert a named block into the editor. So this is talking about having a named block in the source code of the presentation. Right, so we want to be able to just start the editor. It doesn't have to be a named block, but, but a, so, this already exists in, in the code. In the, in the code right now, you can use an org mode block to create a starting editor state for a slide, for a section.
but there is currently no way to edit that. The presentation tool should not be dependent on going into the text file and editing things. So in the tool itself, you should be able to set initial state of editor for slide. So this is a left side editor and it's a JPRES. And I guess I should do this for that too. JPRES, JPRES, left side editor. All right, command to evaluate the editor in the REPL. Yep, definitely need that. And that needs to be part of the macro language or just a standalone command on the line. Draw the editor's cursors. Yeah, currently it does not have a cursor. So yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, use background to draw the selection. Background. How about just draw the selection? Save state of the editor slide. Yep, same thing. Um, that's what I did yesterday for the REPL, and I need to do the same thing for the uh, left hand side. Okay, so I'll go ahead and assign some priorities to each of these. Set initial state of the editor for the slide. That's a B. And insert line from REPL at position X. All these are Bs. Draw the editor cursors, draw the selection, save state of the editor slide each step. These are all Bs because um, my first video does not use the editor. I, I wrote a script that, that would only use the REPL. And this, we're now into the nested sections here. I'm trying to flatten all these things. Right, larger changes. Okay, this is actually fairly important. How do I do level of effort? I looked that up, but I didn't actually read it. Effort estimates. CXC. CXE. All right, and so we're gonna make the level of efforts, we're gonna use like a Fibonacci stunt. What is it called? Efforts. Oh, does it want us to do clocks? It looks like it wants, all right, I'll just use Fibonacci hours then. Set effort all. Um, you start by setting up discrete values for effort estimates and a columns format that displays these values together with clock sums. Estimated effort time. So you, this says show the task, show the estimated effort and the clock. This is not what I want to use the clock for. I, I guess my unit of time is like sections of a <laughs> episode or whatever, right? Speed up the escape code parsers. CXE. This is at least one day, maybe even two days, mm, whatever. Optimize output of render and blit. It's not easy, but it is, it's a small amount of work and pretty important. Uh, so that's probably gonna be the first kind of optimization I do. But I have all these things here. Didn't mean to take you with it. Make key bindings table driven. I consider this fairly important. Maybe a B. Fix loop KVM so left argument does not need to be in the Z locale. Um, I have no idea how to do that. That would be a research project. So I need to think through that. That actually is probably gonna be like a day or two day of effort. So C C X E effort is, I'll call it three days. I'll do Fibonacci style. And is it a priority? No, not really. It only affects me. So that's a priority C. Clean up the whole focus key binding mess. Yes, this is a huge priority uh, for me. Uh, it is a bigger project. I'm going to say three days. This is JKVM. It's also JPRES because it's causing the code to be ridiculous in both. So make sure our an update in render REPL. Oh, this was a trivial thing. I think it's done. Oh, also, this is a, a bug. Uh, I set TSV is equal to zero in macro player. It should be one. So this is something I did yesterday. I, I set a random value and I used the question mark zero to get a random value for a random number of seconds to pause. Uh, but I want it to always be zero. So I should have said question mark one instead of question mark zero. I'm, I'm slowing down the, the evaluation of the macros by when you load a file by like milliseconds here. But that's not what I should do. It shouldn't be uh, delayed at all. Make key bindings table driven so people can choose which keys they use for. Yeah, that's. This is a feature of JKVM and then also for J. REPL and, and really JPRES, so all of them, all of them are affected by this. This is just a general, I'll just call it JKVM. Uh, and then later I can go in and make other tickets. Fix JKVM on OSX. This is absolutely a priority. CXE level of effort. Well, I don't know what's wrong with it. And I have to set up the Mac in the first place. So this is probably going to be three days. Speed up the escape code parsers. I've already estimated it at two days. I think that's about right. I know how to do it. It's just, there's a lot of code. And then I set that the priority with control C comma, and I'm going to call that a, that's a B. I think there are other fixes. We'll speed that up first. Token editor. Uh, this, I'm going to move it to the very end. But I had this whole like syntax aware editor and it knew how to work on individual tokens. And I, I took that out. I think it makes some cool, cool animations, but it's, it's super low priority right now. Small bug fixes and enhancements. Okay. Like I'm going to move this to the top of the list because 
I think there's a lot of stuff we can do small. And then I'll move this one over and delete this. Now we have just unprioritized backlog. Colorize input history for standalone REPL. It's super low priority and there's easy workarounds for it. You just explicitly set the cursor to whatever you want. Rearrange MJE so that open isn't in the middle of the file. This is C and kind of like technical depth. Make A equals one the default for widgets. Yes, I had this bug come up several times. This is trivial to implement. It's an optimization to turn it off. Command pane is not scrolling correctly. It is now. Fixed it yesterday. World suff suffixes are leaking into error messages. Uh, that's true, and I already had uh, a message about it above, so delete that. Use numeric prefix for multi-command. That's just keyboard binding, right? So that, that's the ability to, to type the same key multiple times in a row or the same numbers of pauses in a row. So this is part of JKVM itself. It's part of the editor widget, so edit. As is this. Toggle selection mode, JKVM. Highlight the selection. Allow setting Vim or Emacs key. Uh, this is low priority. To delete next word. Uh, these are quality of life things. Stop, restart macros during playback. Well, macros are short. I think I'm just not gonna do this. Canceled. But I'm gonna track the things that I rejected so that you know, so maybe somebody wants to question my decisions and, and let me rethink them. Um, okay, so emit color codes only when they change. Yeah, this is a optimization, but I think this is actually just a detail on something I said before. Render. Oh, I see. Yes, I, I've got these are Let's move all these things down to the bottom of the backlog and I'll put a line here that says where I stop prioritizing. I've just decided that I like the idea of this being a little bit flatter. I think it'll be easier to just work down the list in these uh, morning show things, but I can process these later. Text editor component. Oh, that's a lot of stuff in there. This is almost like documentation at this point. Oh, elastic tab stops. That's nice. File commands. Turn to mode view mat. The, the files actually work, uh, but these are like just editor files, right? This is talking about editor files. Editor file commands. Maybe I'll make like a little example program for the editor or something. But uh, file browser, I definitely want to do. Get status would be nice. Yeah, get status widget. File browser. JKVM. I already talked about CWIO. CWIO, that's somewhere up here somewhere. Oh. Maybe that is the place where I, I talked about it. This was all about the escape codes that understands escape codes. Most of these are already done. Do I need to, yeah, okay, not important right now. All right, anyways, we, we've got this. Let's move all the A's to the top of the backlog. And first of all, move all the A's here, A's here. We got a bug, so bugs should take priority anyway. A, these will just move them to the bottom. And we have some that aren't even estimated here yet. Okay. All right, oh, I'm done. I got to get ready for work. Hopefully next time will be a little more interesting. Uh, see you guys later. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.